Well, friends, it's great to welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as we gather for a Christmas Eve service of worship a little differently than we normally do, right? <laughs> normally we are gathered in the house, many of us uh, on Christmas Eve, we're coming to you before then. And so it's a joy to welcome you. Um, whatever time you're watching this with your family or by yourself in your home, we pray this will be an encouraging time for you and that uh, you will participate. Uh, with the, uh, the responses, uh, the litany, uh, the hymns, and that these uh, few minutes together uh, in this different kind of way uh, will in fact bring joy to your heart as we remember this good story. So, Eric, you want to lead us in our call to worship? Yes, let's join together in our call. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Come, Lord Jesus, our light and our salvation. Let, Let us walk in, in the, the light of, of the Lord. Lord. Let's continue our worship in song with O Come All Ye Faithful. Let's continue our worship with our morning prayer. Let us pray together. Good, Good and gracious God, on this holy night you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling cloths, the Savior of all, lying in a manger. On this holy night, join our voices with the heavenly host, that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have waited, Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Lord, who rules the world with truth and grace forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to read the Christmas story, and so from Luke chapter 2. Uh, this is the familiar story to us, and I pray that as we read it again <clears throat> for 
however many times it's been that we've heard this story uh, in our lives, the same story heard in very different circumstances. And so may God's word speak to us. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And friends, this is the word of God. Bye. 
Kristen, thank you. Mm. Well, uh, I want to tell a little children's story, uh, kids, before we talk to the, your moms and dads. Christmas Eve is such a fun time. We can hardly wait for Christmas Day, and maybe there's some gifts that'll be opened uh, tonight. And so, uh, just want to read a little story to help capture a little bit of the spirit of Christmas. And so we remember that Christmas is not just about us getting a bunch of toys, but it's about the way we can show love like God showed to us. And so this is a story from far away, long ago, from the land of Russia. And a man named Leo Tolstoy wrote a story about an old shoe cobbler who dreamed one Christmas Eve that Jesus would come to visit him the next day. The dream was so real that the cobbler was convinced it would come true. A cobbler is somebody who makes shoes and fixes shoes. So the next morning he got up, went out and cut green boughs, decorating his little cobbler shop, getting everything ready for Jesus to come. He was so sure that Jesus was going to come that he just sat down and waited for him. The hours passed, but Jesus didn't come. Hmm. But an old man came. He came inside for a moment to get warm out of the winter cold, and as the cobbler talked with him, he noticed that the holes in the old man's shoes were there. So he reached up on the shelf and got him a new pair of shoes. He made sure they fit, that his socks were dry, and sent him on his way. Still the cobbler waited for Jesus, but he didn't see Jesus come. But an old woman came. She was a woman who hadn't had a decent meal in two days. They sat and visited for a while as he prepared some food for her to eat. He gave her a great meal and sent her on her way. And he wondered how long it would take for Jesus to come to him. He knew the Lord was busy and gave it no further thought as he sat down to wait for Jesus. But Jesus still didn't come. Then he heard a little boy crying out in front of his cobbler shop. He went out and talked with the boy, and he discovered that the boy had been separated from his parents. He was lost and couldn't find his way. So the cobbler put on his coat, took the boy by the hand, and led him safely home. When he came back to his little shoe shop, it was almost dark, and the streets were empty of people. And then, in a moment of despair, he lifted his voice to heaven, saying, Oh, Lord Jesus, why didn't you come like you showed me in the dream? And then, in a moment of silence, he seemed to hear a voice saying, Oh, shoe cobbler, lift up your heart. I kept my word. Three times I knocked at your friendly door. Three times my shadow fell across your floor. I was the man with the bruised feet. I was the woman you gave to eat. I was the boy on the homeless street. Isn't that a great story? That's good. Wow. And so Christmas is not about us getting lots of toys and all that. It's about the love of God that is shown and he wants us to go give of ourselves to other people. And so, Father, bless these children, bless the grandchildren, bless each of our homes, that we may truly understand the gift that Christmas is. Thank you for your love. And so teach us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, this sure is different. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it's Christmas Eve, right, everybody? <laughs> um, we're gathering in the morning, <clears throat> and uh, obviously we have Christmas Eve on video now, and there are exactly six people in the room, okay? So this is a different kind of Christmas Eve. <laughs> For sure. It feels more like early in the pandemic when we, had, we didn't have any idea how we were going to do this. And exactly. Sort of gathered it's March and, now, right? Yeah, That's we, what we it feels like. We gathered and it was us sitting in the room. And, uh, 
Yeah. Okay, this is my 20th Christmas at Greenwich. Hmm. My 20th Christmas Eve to celebrate. Uh, and it's unlike any year before, I can assure you. So I've been thinking back 20 years, 20 Christmases. So my first Christmas Eve at Greenwich was Christmas Eve 2001. We came in the spring of 2001. And I remember that year Christmas Eve was very special, not only because it was my first Christmas Eve with the congregation, but we were still in the shadow. The dust was still settling from the September 11th attacks. That's right. And so we were pulled together in a way, and there was a holding together in a special way. And so that first Christmas Eve in 2001 was so special. Um, I remember 2008, we were at the height of the Great Recession, and there were some families in the church family that were struggling, and, you know, there were some, there were some uh, pinching, pinching uh, pennies, as it were, a little bit in the, in the church budget, and we were attentive. It was a, a cold winter, it felt, in some ways. Um, Christmas Eve of 2012... Little did I know that was going to be the last Christmas Eve that I would spend with my father, who within the week would die. Yeah. He died on the 30th. And so we had no idea that less than a week later that, that dad would be dead. And so it was our last Christmas Eve with him. 2014, remember that? Our last Christmas Eve with all the services crammed in. Lon, remember that? Just all smooshed in <clears throat> in the old chapel because yeah. in 2015 we were going to be in this building. And so the, it had a poignancy and, and, and a sweetness on Christmas Eve of 2014. And now this, <laughs> Christmas <laughs> Eve of 2020, a COVID Christmas Eve that is coming to your homes by video. What a strange and different thing we are walking through. This is probably through. more different than all the other ones. Right? It, 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 it can't be as, as each of those, as I remembered each of those, I said this tops them all. Yeah. Christmas Eve at Greenwich, you know, it is such, we have such rich traditions here. Um, the gathering, particularly in those, those years when we would gather all in the, in the chapel, and we still would do that at the 11 o'clock service, service you know, we, we kept that going. But there was such celebration and joy, the coziness, the snug. We would be sitting on top of each other, so, so full. But Christmas Eve's really a community event, and that's what feels so strange with an empty sanctuary, because Christmas Eve is kind of like a, a, a homecoming of sorts. Um, it's a, like a family reunion. And so, you know, the early service, we would have children, you know, play, uh, kind of like gathered around the piano in the family home. And, and, and Christmas Eve has always had that sense of reunion. Family members, um, you know, um, uh, parents, grandparents, or the kids who've grown up and moved away. Uh, I, I've watched over these 20 years, watched some of the children grow up, and now they're married and have children of their own. And, and so Christmas Eve is such a, a sweet time. But Christmas Eve is also full of some bitter sweetness. Mm -hmm. Because every year we've said some sad goodbyes to yeah. folks in the, in the Greenwich Church family. Um, and there's a seat that's empty next to us on Christmas Eve, and we feel that. We, we feel that. And so uh, on Christmas Eve, the hearts are full of emotion and memories, and, and sometimes the, the eyes are full of tears. And so Christmas Eve has so much uh, for us. But through all of the challenges, uh, and, and this one too, but all the challenges over the years all the changes that we've experienced in the Greenwich family and in our own families, there's one thing that hasn't changed. And you know what it is? <laughs> we read the exact same story, word for word. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the, the story I just read, word for word, same translation <laughs> for all 20 years. <clears throat> we tell it the same way year after year. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Yeah. And we're off into the story. And, and we could almost tell it by heart. We've, we've heard it so often. And so the story is the anchor. It's what holds us fast. It's the, it's the solid rock. It's the foundation under our feet. Because the story reminds us that we have a God who so loved the world the world that he made, the world that turns its back on him, 
that God so loved that world that he gave his one and only son. And we know how that goes too, right? <laughs> that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him would have eternal life. And so that's what, that's what keeps this strange, different Christmas yeah. together is the story. The people aren't here. This is a different thing. You're watching at home, uh, hopefully on Christmas Eve. Maybe it's on Christmas Day. You might watch this a, a day or two later. We don't know. And so we openly acknowledge this is a different kind of Christmas, a different kind of, of Christmas Eve. And, and frankly, I don't know that we really like it either, right? No. <laughs> and I don't know that we're supposed to like it. Um, but I was thinking, maybe there's a silver lining. Uh, you know, I kind of tend to look for that. You know, in the challenge, there's an opportunity. There's a blessing in disguise. Uh, there's, there's an opportunity that hides inside the challenges uh, of life. So saying before, before we, we turned on the video, it's really about learning to embrace the different. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, ah, just to embrace this, lean into it a little bit, um, and to recognize that the story is what does not change. That's what keeps us together. That's what keeps uh, this gathering in this different kind of way together. Uh, for some, I know that this is going to be a, a frustrating and disappointed um, Christmas celebration. There were travel plans or other plans to be with family and friends that have just had just been disrupted. It's just that simple. Uh, for some, it's going to be a smaller, simpler, less hectic Christmas, and, you know, that, that may be a little easier to embrace that, but some of us like the big gathering, and, and so the simpler, we're not, you know, I know some folks aren't decorating quite this, the same way. Some of the distractions way. are kind of taken away. Yeah, and, and that's probably not all bad, mm -hmm. but we'll feel that. Right. Okay, we're going to feel it. We're not going to have the same gathering around our table on Christmas Day. And for some, <clears throat> this is going to be a lonelier, sadder Christmas. We know that. Um, it's, it's been a hard year. You can't be with family, and so it'll be lonely, or you, you've lost a loved one. And, and we, we honor your tears and, and recognize that, that sadness. There's an empty chair of a loved one uh, uh, around the table. And so whatever this Christmas Eve and this Christmas celebration uh, finds you doing, whenever it happens and wherever you are and however you celebrate it, maybe there's an opportunity here to embrace the different. In the strangeness of this event, maybe there's an opportunity to, to go back just to the story. <laughs> Because Christmas does get laid over with so many things. Traditions, in arms, and not all the traditions are bad traditions, so please, please hear me. And yet, when, when we're disrupted and when there's an empty chair and when we're not able to do all that we have loved to do, that there's a space that opens up. Right. And maybe into that space, we can welcome God. Right. One of our hymns uh, talks about, let every heart prepare him room. Mm -hmm. Maybe the different kind of Christmas that we're celebrating and walking through allows us to prepare room in our hearts afresh mm -hmm. for our Lord. Um, know that you're loved. <clears throat> That's, that's what Christmas Eve is about. That's what Christmas Day is about. That's what this story is about, that, that you are loved, yes, by family and a church family, but most importantly, we're loved by a God. Yeah. It occurs to me that all these traditions that you're talking about um, were designed and created, or we began doing them, people began doing traditions at home in order to remind and commemorate the love that they share with one another and the love that we have for God, right? So traditions are there to point us to God. Over time, as we collect traditions and 
Mm. And um, they become habits. It becomes about the tradition itself as opposed to the thing that it was pointed toward. And so it's sort of an opportunity. As some of those things are, are forced away from us, yeah. we have this chance to remind ourselves this is about God loved us so much Correct. that he came and laid down his life. That's why we gather and celebrate the birth. It's not about you know, the way that we celebrate it. It's about what we're celebrating. And the birth story of Jesus the Christ, who comes to be the son of David, the king of the Jews, the king of the world, is a different kind of birth story for a king. But we're so used to it, we don't recognize how different it is. So picture like over in Britain, the royal births, you know, when the royals have a child. Sure, and all the cameras are outside and waiting for the first picture of the child. The countdown, yeah. and so, and God chose a different kind of birth. He's going to enter the story so differently and going to kind of sneak on into Bethlehem from out of town with a three or four day walk because of this census that's been decreed by the king over there in Rome. And then Mary and Joseph aren't going to find a place, and so the baby has to be laid in a manger. And we're so used to that story, we don't realize how different that is. Yeah. We serve a different kind of king yeah. than the kings of this world. And so we pray for you and your family that this would be a different kind of Christmas in all of the best and blessed ways. And even in the aching or the frustration or the disappointment or the simplicity that you wish were fuller, may your heart prepare him room. Amen and amen. I want to uh, offer the traditional Christmas Eve prayer that I read uh, when we are gathered. This is a, a Christmas prayer for the home. Father of all, Look upon our church family and our own families gathered together before you this year differently and grant us a true Christmas. With loving hearts, we bless you for the gift of your dear son, Jesus Christ, for the peace he brings to our homes, for the goodwill he teaches to sinners like ourselves, for the glory of your goodness shining in his face. With joyful voice we praise you for his lowly birth and rest in the manger, for the purity and tenderness of his mother Mary, for your fatherly care that protected him to be the Savior of the world. In praying and praising, in giving and receiving, in eating and drinking, in singing and making merry, in parents' gladness and children's laughter, in dear memories of those who have departed, in good friendship with those who are near, in kind wishes for those who are far away, in patient waiting and generous cheer, God bless us, everyone, with the blessing of Jesus, in whose name we keep this Christmas, and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we sing Silent Night to close out the service. Uh, we have a litany. A litany is kind of a responsive prayer in some ways, and it's based on the uh, old hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And so Eric is going to read the, the phrase, I guess, and then our refrain will be, Come, Lord Jesus. And so we'll invite you to join us uh, as we say, come Lord Jesus, after Eric reads each of these sections. So, Eric? Let's join in prayer. O wisdom, coming forth from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, you order all things with strength and gentleness. Come now and teach us the way to salvation. Come Lord Jesus. O Adonai, ruler of the house of Israel, 
you appeared in the burning bush to Moses and gave him the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm to save us. Come, Lord Jesus. O root of Jesse, rising as a sign for all the peoples, before you earthly rulers will keep silent and nations give you honor. Come quickly to deliver us. Come, Lord Jesus. O key of David, scepter over the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come to set free the prisoners who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Come, Lord Jesus. O radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, sun of justice, come shine on those who live in darkness mm. and in the shadow of death. Come, Lord Jesus. O ruler of the nations, monarch for whom the people long, mm. you are the cornerstone uniting all humanity. Come, save us all, whom you formed out of clay. Come, Lord Jesus. O Emmanuel, our sovereign and lawgiver, desire of the nations and savior of all, come and save us, O Lord our God. Come, Lord Jesus. God of grace, ever faithful to your promises, the earth rejoices in hope of our Savior's coming and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive him when he comes, for he is Lord forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And we will sing Silent Night. So as we close out this service, we, uh, from the pastors and staff uh, at Greenwich, we wish uh, our 
best blessing and, and grace and kindness to you uh, this Christmas season. And we do look forward to seeing you. Uh, depending on when you may be watching this, we'll be gathering for carols at 5 p.m. Uh, on Christmas Eve. Uh, and we'll be, perhaps be seeing you Sunday morning, the 27th, uh, as we continue our Christmas worship. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this night and forevermore. Amen.